Now today, Mr. President, I plan to talk about the President's budget, but first I also want to say a word about Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher was one of the most transformative political figures of the 20th century. She was a revolutionary really a tireless tribune for what she called popular capitalism, her crusade to enfranchise the many. Thatcher's methods were razor-sharp wit and the force of her will, which had toughened through decades of literally plowing through obstacles. A woman of humble beginnings, she charged headfirst against a cross-partisan ruling class that had become calcified in office, an elite clique that had grown impotent in the face of the sort of post-war economic challenges that have long since drained the vitality from Western democracies that never had a leader like her. The starched dukes and faceless union men who traditionally alternated the reins of British power sneered at that woman, as they called her, the grocer's daughter, who knew nothing of their ways, whose middle-class instincts were unsuited to the business of governing. And yet she outmaneuvered them all. When Margaret Thatcher finally wrested the keys of office from those who had made peace with Britain's decline, in a way she never could and never would, she set in motion a whirlwind of reforms. None of those were easy. The vested interest opposed her every move, but in the teeth of fierce opposition, she ignited what could best be described as a political and economic earthquake, one with a tide of global reverberations. The kind of policies and ideas she inspired saw dictatorships and entrenched bureaucracies come crashing down. Grinding poverty lose its grip, and the fossils of socialism recede into the surf. And in the wake of this wave of reform stood freer people with a greater say over their own lives and a greater hope for the future. That, Mr. President, is Margaret Thatcher's legacy. And in some ways, the parallels to our own day are hard to escape. When Margaret Thatcher took office, Britain was gripped by wrenching economic turmoil, turmoil of a somewhat different kind than, but not entirely dissimilar to our own. But through un and so we mourn her passing. But we still have much to learn from her courage and example. Because in the years ahead, we'll need to draw from it as conservatives look to turn the tide here in the US and to set about a renewal of our own. Now, on another matter, tomorrow the President is set to unveil his budget, the details of his plan for America's future. Is it going to be a visionary blueprint that focuses on growing the economy instead of the government? A budget that can help rather than continue to hurt job creation? Is it going to be a budget that balances 10 years from now 20 years from now, ever? Is it going to be a reformist document that makes bold choices? Will he finally drop the tax hike fanaticism that's frankly starting to enter the realm of the absurd? Well, from what we've heard so far, the prospects don't look all that great. We hear that the Senate Democratic budget, just like the Senate Democratic budget, it will never balance, ever. We hear it contains only about $600 billion or less in deficit savings over 10 years, which is roughly the level of the deficit in the first six months of this fiscal year. We hear it contains new spending proposals and does little to address the drivers of our debt. We hear it contains a tax hike upon tax hike upon tax hike and in fact, all of the deficit reduction I just mentioned would be derived from myriad tax increases rather than spending reductions. So apart from reports of a modest entitlement change, and we'll need to see the details on that, 
It sounds like the White House just tossed last year's budget in the microwave. Look, this budget is already two months late, so I sincerely hope that it is not the case, that it's just a warmed over version of last year. Because if it is, what a colossal waste of time and what a disappointment. The American people really deserve a lot better than that. In a statement released yesterday, President Obama said Margaret Thatcher taught us that we are not simply carried along by the currents of history, that we can shape them with moral conviction, unyielding courage, and iron will. Well, what I'm saying this morning is that this is your moment to do just that, Mr. President, your moment. Lady Thatcher did not save her country from the abyss by taking half measures or tiptoeing around special interest groups. She pushed through groundbreaking reform after groundbreaking reform, usually under heavy fire from all sides and often over the objections of powerful leaders in her own party and cabinet. Had she governed by opinion poll, I'm sure she would have been a lot more popular while in office. And Britain would have never recovered from the abysmal state in which she found it. So, Mr. President, if you are ready to embrace bold reform, to take the steps that are needed to make our entitlement programs permanently solvent and grow the economy, then Republicans are ready to work with you. Because the time for pretending America's challenges can be solved with more of the same is over. Over. The time has come to summon the political courage.